Hey guys, Augs here from the US. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment down below, share, and also watch some ads to help the channel out. Follow us on social media and we will follow you back. In today's video, we are going to talk about the Premier League top six honors from the last season, 2018-2019, because we don't know what's going to happen to the new season, 2019-2020. It could be voided, so just let's talk about the teams that finished in the top six last season and discuss about their honors. At the bottom of this list, I will go with Daniel Levy, the Spurs majority owner. I will give him 2 out of 10. This guy is one of the toughest owners in the Premier League. It's always his way or no way. He never smiles even when his team are winning. He got a very scary face. And spurs fans been complaining for years for the lack of investment regardless of what he did with the training ground and a brand new stadium but all the money going to his pocket the most annoying thing for me is the fact that he tried to scam the government fellow bro fellow can you believe it a billionaire like him with the kind of money he's making trying to scam the poor people like you and me and convince the government to pay for his backroom stuff and that alone for me deserve a jail time that is fraud that is scam i can't really stand the billionaire who always try to take advantage of poor people let's listen to the man himself expressions yeah i googled it i do not care but daniel levy fam you got the man them on furlough blood furlough fam honestly bro it's embarrassing it's embarrassing i ain't seen a trophy since 08 blood that's 12 years you know in that time man could beat a gal you know them where they get her pregnant have a you and them start high school blood and i ain't seen no trophy and i moaned about that i ain't said oh it's embarrassing but this furlough thing Embarrassing. How we, so I'm talking for us Spurs, how we've got a billion, billion pound stadium or whatever fam, you know them way there. We're making all these strides bruv, you know what I'm saying? Eighth richest in the world bro. And what? Furlough fam. Furlough blood. Honestly bruv, it's, it's embarrassing. Number five on my list is the group that owns Liverpool. I'm not gonna say any particular name because there are many so that group deserves five out of ten we know that liverpool been doing very good in the football side but when it comes to the human side they are terrible they try to scam the government so for me that alone is a no-no that attempt of fraud is something that i won't tolerate but the show must go on and fear not because today we have what do we have more absolutely fraudulent behavior more corona frauds that won't put in on the list more billionaire owners taking taxpayers money to pay their own employees acting like they're struggling cheating the system using in loopholes as liverpool yes Liverpool, incredible, isn't it? One of the richest clubs in European football, in world football. Join Bournemouth, Spurs and Norwich City as the clubs begging the government for a bailout. Funded by, you guessed it, yours truly, you. This is an emergency fund yeah, for people and small businesses that are really struggling. People that are actually in need. Not Philip Green yeah, and Richard Branson, who've spent their entire careers doing their utmost to avoid paying as much tax as possible. Once more, the rich stealing from the poor and shaming the working class into believing that footballers are to blame is absolutely fucking comical. The same footballers who are making their billionaire owners millions of pounds every match day. And I'm sorry to say this, but this is nothing short of a dodgy tax scheme. Taxpayers will pay 80% 
and Liverpool will pay 20%. You've got people actually out here saying, Hugh, calm down. Liverpool are paying 20%. Tottenham aren't even paying the 20%. Why aren't you giving them stick? I've given them stick already. But let me remind you, my Freudian friends, that it was only five weeks ago, as in just over a month ago on February the 27th, that Liverpool announced pre-tax profits of over £43 million and turnover of over £550 million. But they need help. Oh, but they need help. So much money are they raking in that they paid agents £43 million last year. £43 million in a year to agents. But why would you expect anything different from a club that strategically bought old people out of their homes that they'd lived in for decades for a fraction of the property value so that they could ensure big contracts for expanding the stadium weren't jeopardised. That means you've got guys in suits who were representing the club, who were waking up specifically to work out how to fraud the elderly out of their money and homes. Okay. But don't worry, yeah? You'll never walk alone. Number four on my list will be the city group. It's a group. It's not an individual. So I'm going to just address it as the city group that owns Man City. I will give them 5 out of 10. Why? Because there are some dodgy businesses. But before I talk to the dodgy businesses, I have to make it clear. I have no problem at all by rich countries or rich owners to buy football clubs and help the community and do all the great work that they are doing okay i know they are wrongly accused sometimes of oil money blood money dirty money blah 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 but i think that is just a stereotype if the money is from the western countries like europe and the united states or north america the money is clean the hands are clean nothing wrong with that even though they use you know, underage kids in their businesses, you know, working 15 hours in a factory making them rich. That is not a child abuse. That is not a problem. But when it comes to somebody from Asia, from Russia, from the Middle East, from Africa, from South America, all their money is oil money, dirty money, blah, 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 blah. Well, I think uh, some people are trying to hide their own crime by highlighting other people's problems. You know what I mean? So you judge it. I don't want to be too political on this one, but I wanted people to think a little bit outside the box because what is the difference between oil money and the clothing money, okay? The food money. How many illegal immigrant you are using to produce you know your food or no how much do you pay them how many hours they are working in those factories do you pay health insurance for them that is a big question but hey clean hands right let's go back to the doji businesses that i was talking about at the beginning and why i gave city five out of ten Man City and Chelsea broke the FIFA rules when it comes to dealing with transfers. And Chelsea wanted to fight and go to court. City admitted the crime and verdict. City got away. They had to pay just a fee and get away with the crime. And Chelsea were fined and also banned for two windows without any transfer activity so what is the message you are sending to the new generation don't fight me i am a big guy here don't waste your time fighting me because i'm gonna punish you you pay me the money you get away with everything you see what i'm trying to say and with the current situation at city that apparently they inflated all their account, creating all kind of uh, uh, business deals that never existed just so they can get away with the financial fair play. So they can buy everybody they want and continue to, dom to dominate in the face of the world.
it's ironic for a Chelsea fan even to start talking about the money thing because we started the whole money revolution but at the time remember they were not financial fair play and Chelsea never broke any rule at the time. Manchester City have been banned from the Champions League for the next two seasons for breaking financial fair play rules. Europe's football governing body, UEFA, have also fined the club £25 million. Pounds. Well, our sports presenter, Nick Powell, joins me now from Sky News Centre. Nick, give us a bit of the background to this uh, and explain this, uh, this huge punishment. Yeah, um, the punishment is huge. Manchester City, they're not surprised. I'll give you more of that in a second. I am surprised that most of the football world uh, is taken a little bit aback by the scale of the punishment. Forget the £25 million. That is piffling for a club of Manchester City's size in relative terms. But a two-year ban from the Champions League is very serious indeed, particularly for a club whose main ambition at the moment is to win the Champions League. They've never won it. And if that goes ahead, if they are indeed banned, uh, then that is very serious indeed. What are they alleged to have done? They are alleged to have uh, inflated uh, a sponsorship agreement. This is all about financial fair play, the UEFA ruling, the European ruling, and there's an element of this in this country as well, that you can't spend more than you earn. And the allegation is that Manchester City have done exactly that, and they've got round financial play fair play rules by inflating uh, the amount of money they got from a sponsorship deal. We have a statement. Number three on my list are going to be the Cronkies. I will give them 5.5 out of 10. I know it's going to be very controversial, but the reason why I put them third on my list is because they didn't ask for the government found to pay their own stuff. They didn't try to scam the poor people like you and me, and for that reason alone, they deserve to be third. But I know they are terrible and the Gunners don't like them. And look who we've got. A guy that spends more money on a fucking wig than the club. That's what we got. That's the reality. Every one of us here that come to the games have spent more money on Arsenal than Stan Kroenke. Fact! More money! My eight-year-old son spent more money than Stan Kroenke. He sits there in America. Does he know we're playing today? Number two, the Glazers. Six out of ten. And that one also is very controversial because many Man United fans don't like them. But let's face it. Those guys been investing a lot of money, to be honest with you. If you compare the money they spent for the last five years with the money Man, uh, Man City spent, there is no a big difference. The difference is Man City went for the younger, hungrier, talented over there for, you know, a long-term project. Whereas United went for shortcut, buy expensive, big stars, uh big wages and probably not good enough on the field you know what i'm trying to say the falcao di maria and all the big names that they bought didn't really produce anything they had to hire somebody like jose Mourinho, uh, david Moyes, and you know louis van gaal expensive coaches that didn't really provide anything in the long term so they had a very short-term vision so i think fans are complaining too much about the 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 glazers not investing money but if you look closely they've been really investing a lot of money but hey that is just my biased opinion i am not a man united fan so i might see things from a different perspective but hey feel free to comment and say whatever you want Wake up from this goddamn nightmare! 
And Manchester United haven't actually managed to strengthen our midfield at all. It's a complete nightmare. I mean, it really is a joke that what's happening at this football club. And it all really stems from, you know, I keep going on about it. So does everybody else. Get it trending. Get it trending worldwide again. Because it's bloody true and it's not going away. And that is that the Glazers are a complete cancer at United. They don't truly reinvest in this football club. They don't really care what happens out there on the pitch as long as it's ticking over and making them money. And they can use the brand as a commercial enterprise and an entity for them to make them bloody fat cash. That's all they really care about. Do you think they really want to spend huge amounts of money to appease the fans and get the players in and improve the squad during the transfer window when they could just sell players and not improve and not get the players into? If you heard it in the stadium, chants against Ed Woodward and the Glazers, vocal and loud from the Stretford end, as well as the support for Solskjaer. That's what I wanted to see. That's what you all wanted to see. And we saw it today, United fans pointing the finger firmly at the Glazers and Woodward, which is exactly the right thing to do. The number one on my list is... Boom! Roman Abramovich, the Chelsea owner. Yeah, I might sound very biased here, but there is nobody that will tell me the opposite. Because this guy been doing great work. I don't care what you think about him. If you have proof of him doing some dodgy businesses and blah, blah, blah. Just like I said in the beginning, if you are from Russia, Asia, Middle East, Africa, South America, your money is dirty. Okay? It's blood money, but you don't have any proof. The guy is investing a lot of money all over the world, creating jobs, contributing to economy of the world, really, because he's giving jobs everywhere in America, Africa, Middle East. UK is just like the top of the top, right? Look what he's doing with this pandemic and all that. Who else is doing what Abramovich is doing. Nobody. And I understand that he's been accused wrongly for just being rich, you know? <laughs> oil money, oil money. If you ask somebody what oil money means for you, they don't know what is the definition of the oil money. It just happened that he just invested some money on oil and got rich. What is the problem with that? What is the difference between you investing your money on oranges, for example? You sell orange and then you get money. What is the difference? It just happened that maybe my country got oil and I got an opportunity to get money from oil. What do you want me to do? You know? So as a Chelsea fan, I, I might sound very, very biased, but... Abramovich is a dream owner for every team. Even Arsenal or Man United or any other team would secretly tell you that they would like to have an Abramovich in their team. So if they are talking in public to try to banter, to try to insult, just because they are jealous. Period. Very good. Yeah. Now, moving on to a man, Roman Abramovich. Yeah, okay. Not everyone's favourite person. Came from Russia. I mean, look, the thing is about Roman, and he's got his haters, he's got his lovers, but you cannot fault the guy because he is the reason that Champions League trophies, European trophies, Premier League trophies, FA Cups, every English trophy you could think of came to Chelsea because he came in. He put so much money into that football club. It's controversial, but I'm going to put him in ninth place. Bramovic has come in with his money and he's constantly, year after year, put money in. Yeah. And not only that, he's done good things within the community, for charity, for the women's team, but mainly his trophy cabinet. Yeah. How many trophies have Chelsea won? It's almost exactly. one a year. Roma ti maledietz ti Sami Haroshi Hazian the Premier League. What you are mean? the number one owner in the Premier League. Dad, how much Russian hard money has he slipped in there? <laughs> First place, are you kidding me? Oh my God. He said he'd buy me a vodka. All right, a vodka? <laughs> yeah, a house with it as well. Bloody hell, that's incredible. You put yeah. him first? I did well, not expect... He... No one, I wouldn't expect anyone to put him in first place right now. After all the rumours that it looks like he's leaving and stopped putting well, money. Ah, yes, that, and part of the reason for that is the bloody British government, you know, wouldn't renew his visa. So mm. he had to go off to Israel to get yeah. an Israeli passport. It's true. That's harsh. Moving.